All right, we're back. It's still the breakfast in Plus TV Africa, and of course, uh, time to look at what the papers have for us. Uh, Tunde Kolaole, a legal practitioner, is standing by uh, via phone uh, to do justice in terms of analysis to these headlines. Tunde Kolaole, very good morning to you. Thank you for your time. Good morning to you, my brother. All right. I'm sure you're gearing up. Uh, I'm sure you're anticipating the elections in uh, just under uh, 72 hours from now. Hello? Yeah, I'm sure you're looking forward to the elections in under 72 oh, hours from absolutely, now. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Right. I am the chair of the of my choice, and I hope that you have to do the same. All right, thank you very much. Let, let's uh, uh, get the ball rolling with a look at stories coming on the front page of the Leadership newspaper. Um, of course, elections are taking most of the attention there, especially with the lead stories. Uh, leadership has this one, 2023 elections, vote where you are. Northern elders or Hanese tell Nigerians, isn't it too late? Vote where you are. Uh, right as to that, demand adequate security for citizens. INA declares 146,913 election observers warns against interference. UK threatens visa ban on perpetrators of violence. So while the Americans have already started, you know, um, denying visas to some persons, the UK is still threatening it. Uh, more from the leadership. PMB didn't impose running mate on me, Tinubu. PMB didn't impose running mate on me, Tinubu. IGP has four-year term, can't be sacked, court rules. IGP has four-year term, can't be sacked, uh, court rules. NNPCL confirms rise of oil production to 1.6 million barrels per day. I wonder if that will uh, make any meaning to Nigerians. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, Nara Swap, Kaduna Kogi, Zamfara foul contempt charge against Malami Emefiele. All right. Cash crunch won't affect us. PDP, LP, NNPP, SDP declare. Cash crunch won't affect us. PDP, LP, NNPP, SDP declare. Gunmen burn women, raise houses in Imo. Uh, DMO clarifies 2.13 trillion naira borrowing in two months. DMO clarifies 2.13 trillion naira borrowing in two months. Quite an amount of money. Let's move on to the next newspaper. Uh, the nation has the following headlines. Uh, Colorful Roadshow draws curtain on Tinubu's campaign. Indeed, uh, he made his way in a motorcade on that uh, open top bus through the streets, or some streets in Lagos. Uh, I saw a picture of um, uh, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Oshodi, and a uh, large crowd cheering him on as he made his way to the Tesli Balogun Stadium in uh, Suruleri, where another uh, mammoth crowd was waiting for him, President Buhari there as well. So Nation put it this way, colorful roadshow draws curtain on Tinubu's campaign. More from the nation, Naira crisis, states file contempt action against Malami Emefili. Right. Uh, Wiki, Rivers knows who to vote as president. Oni loses, Oni rather, loses again. That's talking about the Kitty uh, governorship case. We have uncovered plots to cause civil unrest on poll day, says NSA, National Security Advisor. We have uncovered plots to cause civil unrest on poll day, says NSA. Who is behind this unrest? Um, you can read that paper for details of that. Over to the punch. Naira crisis, cash-strapped Nigerian bank, or Nigerians rather, bank on Supreme Court as hearing resumes today. Governors demand Malami and Mayfield a sanction for contempt of court. Banks extend old 1,000 Naira 500 notes collection mop up to, up to April 10. That's what they're saying. Panic in black market as dollar Naira rate fluctuates sharply. Police of Moteku nab suspects with fake new notes. Kerosene price rises by 100 
and 36 percent. And five police chiefs, chiefs posted to rivers, uh, CPs deployed. Five police chiefs posted to rivers, <laughs> CPs de redeployed. Interesting um, development in River State. Okay, um, let's go on. I'll work for Nigeria as Buhari worked for me. Tinubu, page 29 of the Punch newspaper. I'll work for Nigeria as Buhari worked for me. Organ harvesting, I reported a query model to police, says victim. And uh, Anambra killings panel begins on-site assessment. IG rejects RRS, some of the headlines on the front page of the nation. We'll look at Daily Trust next. And on the front page of Daily Trust, we have these headlines. INEC gets cash for elections, okay? Um, lucky them, if you're an INEC vendor, a vendor to INEC, I think this would be a good time for you because they will pay you in cash. And if they don't pay you in cash, ask them for your cash. So um, INEC gets cash for elections. Rex to collect money from CBN state branches. EFCC, ICPC, others to monitor spending. It's wrong. CBN usurping INEC's independence. Falano with that one. Uh, another poll. After yesterday's poll that put uh, Tinubu ahead, uh, OB second and Atiku third. This time you have another poll. And the Daily Trust goes the way the punch went yesterday by announcing that it is an advertorial. Okay, the punch was the only paper to use the word advertorial uh, in that Tinubu poll yesterday. But this is what the Daily Trust advertorial says. It says, Atiku leads in Nigeria's largest poll ever. 3.1 million people sampled. Okay, congratulations. Race to Asu Rock. Kwan Kwaso. Red Cap Revolutionist Changing the Tide. Uh, police deploy AIG, seven CPs in Rivers Kano. Uh, some headlines. Now let's look at Business Day. Quite interesting addition to uh, a list of papers this morning. And uh, the Business Day focus is on uh, the elections as well. Of course, uh, you have an economic angle to that. It says controversy over clerics' endorsement of candidates. Controversy over clerics' endorsement of candidates, and there's a picture uh, from the APC rally in Lagos with uh, Shiwaju Tinubu, um, with the President Buhari raising the hands of Shiwaju Tinubu and uh, Governor Sahol, who has the candidates uh, for Lagos. More from Business Day. The big story for today, here are gainers and losers from Naira Redesign. Here are gainers and losers from Naira Redesign, the way the paper put it as their big story. Um, you know, which makes some interesting read, an interesting read. NMPC says oil production rises to 1.67 million barrels per day. Details on page 31. OB notches most Twitter followers since presidential race began. That's an interesting uh, expose by the paper. Uh, you can read more about that on page 2. And Naira Shortage puts 200 and $20 billion in formal economy on life support. My God. Naira shortage puts $220 billion in formal economy on life support. I think that's not a bad place to start. Uh, Tunde Wale, thank you for your time once again. I mean, um, for all the plaudits and support that um, well-winning Nigerians have given to Emefiele, uh, the CBN governor, and the CBN regarding this Naira redesign policy and the deadline and all that. And we cannot ignore the damage to the economy. And this is what uh, this day has come out with. What, what are your thoughts? What's your take on this? Well, uh, first and foremost, the thing to say is that um, no matter what uh, goes, the Central Bank of Nigeria and the presidency and the government of the APC as well has wanted to achieve this uh, narrow design, no matter how important the goals are attained, the planning, the timing, and also the lack of capacity to make the funds available at the right quantity and quality and at the right time has defeated the objective. What we were told initially, it was meant to tackle inflation. It was meant to um, 
the courage uh, of what goes in there to the purpose of uh, using it to buy a vote. And of course, too, it was meant to gear or to move in gear towards a complex economy. Just like you have said now, the impact on the informal sector of the Nigerian economy is very, very devastating. And you and I do know that the informal sector of the Nigerian economy is as high or is as much as 80%. So if you have an informal sector that thrives on daily cash transactions, if you give the nature depends on the informal economy in which the traders and petty uh, businesses don't know how to use POS, don't uh, even do banking strategy and all that. You can imagine what the implications would have been on those people. There are individuals like, uh, like the organizer, like the woman that sells uh, the donuts, groceries and what have you. But they depend on their daily earnings. If they don't go to the market on a single day and then are able to make a clean era to sustain their family, they are very, very serious of problem. These people have been ruined. And by the time this Naira issue stabilizes and know that some of them might never recover it. Is. Just like we have seen with the COVID and pandemic, most businesses that collapsed during the COVID have not recovered the hospital now. Furthermore, when this uh, Naira uh, is designed or swapping or changing was carried out, I think, in 1985, it also has such a devastating impact on the economy. And the economy didn't quite recover from, from, from it. So, uh, by the time you look at it from whatever angle you might look at it, whether from the angle of the economy, whether from the angle of social stability, whether even from the angle of the politicians who might want to use the NARA to do whatever they want to do in terms of buying votes and NARA, everybody has been poverty. Everybody has been poverty. And the responsibility of government is not to impair its citizens. If there are a few individuals who have been dealing with Naira, what they should not be dealing with the Naira, who have been handling the Naira in a very unlawful manner, that borders on criminality. And the other arm of government, and this too, all the other arms of government, have all the way we have to use the instrumentality of the state to bring up criminals to book without imposing the kind of hardship that we have seen being imposed on the other Nigerian people. All right, quite interesting, uh, Tunde Kolawole. Let's look at um, what we talked about, an uh, 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 editorial. You know, yesterday's poll, some people pointed out it was an editorial, the Tinubu poll, but some others didn't. Uh, Daily Trust has said that Tiku leads in Nigeria's largest poll ever. So, you know, is, in Christianity, we say, whose report do you believe? In, in this case, whose poll should we believe? Should we believe the OB poll? Should we believe the uh, Tinubu poll or should we believe the Atiku poll? It's getting a bit, a bit confusing. This is uh, honestly very difficult to believe in any of those polls. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, as they say, sometimes statistics do lie. And we have seen statistics lie a lot of times. You will forget that the Brazilian election that uh, was conducted not too long ago. The polls are very conflicting. The accuracy of the polls at the end of the day really didn't work out. But scenario and Lula, at the time, the polls in Brazil said both scenario was likely to win the election. But at another time, it was said that uh, Lula will win with a lifeline market. But at the end of the day, it was Lula that won the election through a very narrow uh, market. In fact, there has to be a runoff between Luna and Bolsonaro in that election. Also, they collect the election that brought the business into power. And the polls in America uh, was disputed at the end of the day. At the time, it was said that the Republicans were going to sweep all the states and all that. But lo and behold, it was um, the Democrats who had the upper hand uh, after the final tallies uh, uh, were counted. On Nigeria, you find out we have not been very honest and truthful in all the polls that have been conducted. So, some of these contestants 
actually hire people to conduct polls for them that will favor uh, the, that will give the impression that they are the one leading the election. You also find out some of those who run some of these poll houses, depending on their political leaning. See, for example, a poll house or a poll, in fact, uh, uh, organization is headed by a Yoruba man. The possibility that we will conduct a poll that will favor a Tinubu is very hard. If it is run by somebody from the South East and who believes in Peter Oki, the possibility is that he will run a poll that will show that Peter Oki is missing. And if it is somebody from Ajamawa State who conducted the poll, the possibility is that he will say it is uh, a people that's going to have an upper hand in the coming presidential election. So they are feeling the too much reliance on the poll. And what is likely to happen, and from the president that we have seen in the past, candidates who ordinarily win in the areas of influence, the areas of their Congo, from the tribal base from which they come from. If they win from their tribal base, the next other places they usually will win is the religious uh, uh, background from which they are coming from. It is whoever who is able to march up the largest number of catchment votes from the cyber resort, from the cyber base, or from the people of this uh, area. And then, secondly, those who are able to mobilize whatever religion that they believe in or that they worship behind them, will most likely have the upper hand this election. And of course, we must not overrule, I mean, overlook the issue of money. Money is a very, very significant factor, a very strong factor in whoever wins the election in Nigeria. Whoever has the much money to spend, not in this coming polls and all that, will have a mess over the other. And of course, we must not forget the incumbency power. The APC are in power <clears throat> at the federal level, at most of the local government level, and also they have 27 governors okay. uh, behind them. Right. By the time you throw these 27 governors into the electoral um, uh, battlefield, and they massage the people in their states uh, behind them, and they are also most likely to use the resources of the state to power this election. You wouldn't want to say that that is going to also make a, a difference on who wins uh, the, the election. Okay. And of course, you must not forget that there are a few Nigerians who are also influence where the pendulum of victory will swing. I'm talking about big businessmen, uh, the hotel dollars, the jungle shares, the adenogas, and all that. Because of their business interests and all that. They will most likely you know, and support those who will not make any policy decision that will jeopardize their business uh, interest. So it's a lot of factors. But I have to say, Nigerians are supposed to open their eyes, look at what has happened in the last eight years, look at the future of the country, where they want to take the country to, look at the capacity, the intellect, the stamina, the background. Uh, antecedents of all these several uh, candidates. All right. And then there's all those factors. Okay. Both the candidates of your choice. Okay. Uh, Tunde, thank you so much. And um, we have uh, another related, uh, uh, you know, headline on the front page of the of leadership, which they will use because of continuity. Um, uh, it's talking about the Labour Party, PDP, NMPP, SDP declaring that uh, the cash crunch won't affect them. Wait. Uh, there is nobody that, um, or any political party that they can't from will not affect. Why do I say so? The average gender will man the polls. I mean, the ballot boxes all over the country. Every one of them is one of the If you don't have money to pay for the transportation of those who will monitor or will supervise your activities in the different polling booths and all that, that is a minus for you as a candidate and then as a, as a political uh, party. Of course, too, you have to fuel vehicles and all that. Of course, you have to feed people. Of course, uh, some people would have registered in a place like uh, uh, Ikorodu, and they now live in a place like uh, in Lagos Island. If they want to go back to where they registered before Saturday, if they don't have the money to go there, if trade is not available for them to be able to go back to where they voted 
I'm ready to register and what happened. That is minus one vote. Now I'm good opinion. So by and large, the turnout in this election might be affected by the cash crunch that we have in our hands. And also the fuel shortage, even though that is beginning to ease out. And we have continued to see all over the country in September 2022. <coughs> all right. All right. Thank you, Tunde. Uh, 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 we'll stay with leadership. Um, yeah. uh, uh, the big one in, on our front page, of course, um, Northern Elders in Ohanese, according to the paper, telling Nigerians to vote where they are. Vote where you are. Where do you hear that? What, what, what do you think that means? Vote where you are. And what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, my thinking is uh, sometimes when there's so much tension in the air, <clears throat> when the policy has been heated up, as much as it has happened in this uh, instance, people might be afraid, they might be scared, they might be feeling threatened, they might be frightened, and then want to relocate to the different regions where they, they come from, even though they may have registered where the ordinary lay at home time, where the ordinary lay uh, live. When such people move from one place to the other, accidents do happen on the way, then they also disenfranchise and what happens. I think the message that is being sent out, that people should vote where they are, is an encouragement for people to be emboldened, to have the courage, to step up where they have registered and vote in there. It is also a way to show us the demographic or the natural strength of some of these uh, candidates. I'll give you an example. When you look at a cosmopolitan place like a Lagos, for example, the tribes in Lagos are almost evenly uh, uh, distributed now. You have factory of tribes from the different parts of the country, the Yoruba, the Igbo, the Alta, the Fulani, and whatever. If all those different tribes are to stay on ground and vote in a place like Lagos, you will find out that the margin of uh, victory for the different candidates and for the different political parties will be very, very minimal because of the heterogeneity, because of the demographic composition of a place uh, like uh, Lega. So, it is for that reason that um, uh, people may have been encouraged also to step to their domicile and vote in those places because if they do so, if you also make, I mean, if you also give us an insight into the ethnic composition or the demographic composition of the different towns of the different states, that we do have in the country. Statistics that even censors have not been able to give us all the censors that we have conducted uh, in the past. Hmm. Um, uh, isn't this too late? Um, of course, you've rightly said that, you know, most of these uh, uh, ethnic ethnicities, you know, you have the, the, the evils, the houses as well, northerners. Um, are nomadic, if you want to call it that. They move from place to place. They like to travel. So you have a lot of people scattered around the country. In Kano, you go to Sabungari, they are there. In Lagos, yeah, there you go to Ajo, you see a lot of them. Um, and of course, those from the northern part of the country travel widely as well, all over the place. Isn't it too late to tell them to vote where they are? Because, I mean, Anik has, has ended the um, uh, as close to the opportunities they had to to change their polling uh, units. You can't change it anymore. So those who registered at home are going to go home. Isn't this call too late? Well, that is the, the paradox of uh, the admonition that has been given to different people. You and I will know that even changing ballots, uh, I mean, where you register and where you want to vote, is a very cumbersome process. You'll have to rise, you have to move from one place to the other. And uh, the capacity of INEC, the accuracy, the success with regards to that has never been. Okay. It is only the people here and the well known people that could be easy to move from one polling booth to the other without uh, much analysis. The ordinary person uh, usually find it difficult to change uh, their polling uh, booth. If you are registered in the north, for example, like most people like this, uh, registered in their respective villages, 
where they want to go back and vote. When asking them to stay put where they are going to where they live, my different archive possible, just like I read around that. What we should be encouraging in Nigeria today is that um, wherever people live, wherever they pay their taxes, wherever they end their living, is their home. That is where they ordinarily need to register and vote when elections do come. That is also places where they should contest elections if they are interested in occupying of this uh, uh, political office. The era of people moving to their villages or to their towns or to their states to either participate in politics or either to vote or uh, be voted for to be a thing of the past. Look at what is happening in Europe, for example. A young woman and nearly became the prime minister of Britain and not too uh, long ago, Ristina uh, was able to defeat the woman for just a slight uh, margin during the store, during the, 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 the primary that was conducted and all that. You've also had some women, Igbo women, uh, Igbo men, who are political leaders in America, who are political leaders in Spain and different parts of the world. And our own children, they are migrating in mass to different parts of the world. You find Nigeria in different parts of the world, say, in Turkey, in uh, Spain, in Saudi Arabia and what have Most of these people will not come back to Nigeria. When they do come back, they generally will just come back for holidays and what have So, if those societies accommodate our people to participate in politics, to vote and be voted for, we should also encourage our own people to stay put where they are doing that, where they end their living, to practicalize their politics and not to start going back to their villages and towns and say, either to vote or to be voted uh, uh, for. The truth of the matter is that uh, the world is on the move. There is mass number of people from different parts of the world to the other. And nobody can stop that. Nobody can stop that. Hey, any Nigerian politician, any Nigerian about or any Nigerian elite who is thinking in that direction is merely running or screaming against the current of what is happening in different parts of the world. Nigeria cannot be an exception. So the mass migration and participation and integration that we continue to see and we will continue to see in the different parts of the world. All right, so we have to go to Nikola Ole. I want to thank you so much for your time. I think all the papers, all the stories we've looked at so far are related to the um, 2023 general elections. There's a lot more to talk about, but we don't have all the time. So I want to wish you a very a peaceful um, uh, 25th of February 2023 and even 26th. Um, and uh, next time we gather here, it will be uh, testimony, testimony, testimony that um, Amen. All, Amen. all the prediction of, uh, of anarchy didn't, didn't come to pass. Amen. To the colorway, thank you very Amen. much for your time. Amen. Amen. And see you next Amen. week. Nigerian is have to live in peace. Absolutely. We will have to after this election. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. All right, uh, we'll be back after the short break uh, to look at the 2023 general elections and everything about the elections, how prepared are Nigerians ahead of the elections. There uh, are calls for, you know, suspension, call, you know, some talk of uh, interim national government, a lot of things flying around uh, the place. In these times, the um, uh, greatest test that Nigeria has faced as a nation economically and election is holding at the same time. We'll talk about it when we come back. Please stay with us.